Hey, this is Derek Watley. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can manage operators from inside of OpenShift using the Operator Lifecycle Manager. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the Operator Lifecycle Manager web UI, and this is available through the OpenShift Admin Console, which is based off of the Tectonic Console. Basically, they've taken the Tectonic Console, rebranded it, and added OpenShift specific features so you can manage all of your OpenShift resources from here as well. The operators section of this admin console web UI is split into two parts. It's split into the top part which has the cluster service versions option and this is what a user of your cluster, a developer, is going to use in order to create operated services on your cluster. And then the bottom three options in this operator menu catalog sources, subscriptions, and install plans. Those are all going to be managed by the cluster administrator. And that's how the cluster administrator can control which operated services are available to cluster users and developers. So to get an idea of where this came from, we can look at the release page for Tectonic, I believe it was 1.7, where they introduced the Open Cloud Catalog. And they have the concept of enabling each of these operators per namespace. And that's equivalent to our create subscription option. So creating a subscription to an operator means that we allow users within some namespace to uh, basically provision that operator. You see this is a namespaced concept. You can think of subscription being equivalent to enable. And since we just enabled the Prometheus operator for our OLM-foo namespace, now when we go to our cluster service versions section of the operator UI, remember this is where the user interacts with it, they are able to create operated services based on our new subscription. So they can create a Prometheus, Prometheus rule, uh, they can also create a monitoring service, and each, for each of these services that they create, they'll be able to specify some options. And after these options are specified, you can see here we have two replicas and a bunch of other options that we're not going to change. We click Create, and the operator starts spinning up a new Prometheus instance for us with two replicas. And then we're also going to create an alert manager based on this Prometheus operator, or I guess I should say this Prometheus cluster service version, which describes all the things we can create Prometheus-related. We will just wait around for a bit for them to show up. So now that we've created some services and they've been uh, provisioned by our operator, let's look back at the admin view. So this is the cluster administrator's view of this system. If we look at our subscription for Prometheus, we can see we have some additional options. For one thing, we can set the um, channel. So right now it's set to preview. And this is telling us at what rate updates to our operator or our cluster service version will be received. The other option we're able to specify for one of these subscriptions is whether we want to use automatic updates or a manual update strategy. And if we select the manual update strategy, this is going to prompt us every time an update is available for our cluster service version. To better illustrate what I mean when I say that an update might be available for our cluster service version, let's take a look at our YAML for this subscription. So you can see here that the starting CSV is Prometheus 0.22.2. If we look over at our config map that contains all of the cluster service versions known to OLM, we can see that there are actually three different Prometheus operator versions in this record. There's 0.22.2, which is the newest version, and we can see that here. And there are also some older versions. So what I'm going to do here is remove the subscription to this new version. And we're going to go back and start on an older version and then guide it through the approval setup process. So each time it wants to request an update, it's going to move from one version to the next, and we're going to have to manually grant it approval. So to start with, let's create our subscription once more. And this time we're going to add a parameter to change install plan approval to manual. And we're going to kick our starting cluster service version back to the Prometheus 0.14.0 version. So that this way we're going to have to make two upgrade jumps to get to the newest version. Interestingly, we're also going to be prompted for the initial installation if we do this. So 
nothing is going to happen until we go to the install plan section of this web UI and grant it approval to run the install plan for the initial 0 0.14 install. You can see it's going to be stuck in this upgrading state forever. And then you go to the installing uh, button, and that's going to bring us to the install plans part of the UI. And this will let us preview the install plan before we let it execute on our cluster. We can see a list of all the resources that are going to be created or modified. And if everything looks good, we can see there's some CRDs as well as some cluster rules being created. We click approve, and now 0 0.14 is installed on our cluster. If you go back to subscriptions, and interestingly, we still see that it's upgrading. So if we go back and see what's up. We can see that there's one version of this already installed and one installing. Now we're looking at the 0 0.15 version, which is higher than our previous 0 0.14 version. As we can see here, it's the middle of the three versions. And once again, we'll be asked to approve this install plan. Click Preview, and then Approve, if, we, if everything looks OK. So now we're halfway there. And now if we go to our install plans page, we can see sort of an overview of all the install plans that have executed on our cluster. So this is like an audit log of changes to our operator, or basically our, our cluster service versions on the cluster. And the final one here, 0 0.22, still needs approval. So we go through the approval process there. And now our, our Prometheus operator that's available to all of our developers on the cluster is the latest version. And when we click on View Subscription, we get a notification that we're up to date, no longer have any updates to CSVs installing. And we can see that the preview channel, the newest version available is 0 0.22. So we're all up to date. And again, if we go back to the cluster service versions part of the UI, which remember is what the user is going to see, that also shows that we are on 0 0.22. And when we create our resources, they're all going to be whatever is available in the newest possible cluster service version. The next thing I want to illustrate is the fact that um, these cluster service versions are namespace specific. So if we change to OLM bar from OLM foo, we can see that there's no longer any cluster service versions available. And we would have to subscribe to the CSV once again for that particular namespace if we want the users in that namespace to be able to use the operator to create services. So now we've installed the etcd CSV, and this gives us access to create several etcd related services. And we can see inside of our cluster service versions UI, where the user sees they have etcd available. We can also add Red Hat AMQ streams. That'll take just a second to install. And then when we go back to our CSVs page, we see we now have two services available as a user to provision. When we go back to OLM Foo, we can see once again that the Prometheus operator is the only service that we've enabled for that namespace. So you can sort of hand different permissions to different users in different namespaces very easily in this way. So the last thing I want to show you in this video is the Operator Lifecycle Manager namespace. This is where the infrastructure components for OLM get installed into OpenShift. So it includes a catalog operator, an OLM operator, package server, and a very large config map, which we'll take a look at that contains the definitions of all of our operated services that we saw from the subscriptions and the CSVs page. So this RH operators config map contains the CS cluster service version section. And if we go over to our catalog sources, this is where all these operators come from. We'll see that a little further. So if we click see all, it's a little bit overwhelming to look at here, but you can see it has all of the documentation. It actually contains a base64 encoded icon for the service. Uh, it includes the different versions that you can install. This is a little bit easier to see in a full-fledged text editor. So I have this pulled up here. And we can see that for each cluster service version, uh, each one of these cluster service versions includes the information necessary to create one service at one version. So for etcd, there's three versions available. Prometheus also has three different versions available. Each of these versions could contain a different icon. They could contain a different uh, set of instructions for the user to follow. 
Here you can see an expansion of our final version of Prometheus Operator here, including uh, all of the instructions. It includes some metadata like the maintainers, keywords, links to find out more about this, as well as, like I said, the base64 encoded icon for the operator. Um, and then it has the install instructions. So it includes all of the information needed to actually get the operator installed in the cluster. So if we compact the install section, you can see there are a few more fields on the CSV, including some custom resource definitions that the CSV owns. And I believe that is actually the final field on this particular CSV. So hopefully that gives you an idea of all of the things that a CSV or cluster service version encompasses. If you want to find out more info about how this is built, I definitely recommend checking out the Operator Lifecycle Manager documentation design section. And you can find information here about the architecture of OLM, what each of these things is more in depth, all the things we looked at, all those menu items on the left of the screen. You can also look at how to build a CSV if you want to distribute an operator through OLM. This is what you need to create to do that. So you, once again, this tells you all of the fields that you could possibly have, uh, CRDs required and referenced. And finally, there's a philosophy section here that discusses some of the backing ideas that I think are really helpful if you're trying to understand this whole framework.